Jimmy K here, Metal Voice. Look at this. The Metal Voice shirts are now on sale. Just go to the video description to find out on how you can purchase one. Metal! Welcome to the Metal Voice, and again on the show, joining us all the way in Ireland. Alan, can you pronounce our Ireland? Ireland. Ireland. Cock. So well, one I mean, of our favorite guests of all time, Mr. Jeff Tate himself. Hi. How's everybody doing? I hope you're well as I am. We're, yeah. we're doing the best we can. Just talking about my new shirt. You like that, huh? I love that shirt. Yeah. Is that new? It's new. That's so, um, Morn Heights, like, as you know, we spoke yeah, like about a reissue of a classic or something. Yeah. <laughs> so they're trying to renovate or trying to keep it alive, the, the studio. Like a groundswell of funds to uh, help restore the place back to its. Uh, wow. They're trying. They're trying. They're trying. They're trying. That's a really great idea, actually, because I, there were some amazing records that came out of that studio and, you know, great bands that worked there, great engineers that worked there. Oh, you know, so it's, it's a legacy. Yeah. There's one, there's one of the great albums that were recorded there, right? Well, one I know of. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> one of All right. I was part of, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk about Loose Studio, but first, let us talk about this acoustic live stream Ooh. in Cork. Cork, Ireland, right? Right. You want, you, yeah. And how do you pronounce Cork in Ireland, Alan? He was, Alan I was, was there. there two years ago, and there was a huge debate. It's supposed to be CAC or Cork. So I don't know if you've entered into any of those debates, but. Well, it, it depends on your accent. The, the people in Southern Ireland have a R to their words that they say. And uh, I, I, I cannot imitate it correctly, so I, I won't. But I won't uh, it kind of sounds like C-A-R-C-K when they pronounce it. If that makes Cargo. sense. Kark. 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 Oh, there I did it. I told myself I wasn't going to do it. <laughs> All right, when I was there, much okay, to my chagrin, I'm, I'm in a rock bar having a few beverages, and in comes a guy with a brownie, Brian Downey Experience t-shirt. He had just played down the, down the street. They had done Thin Lizzy, Live and Dangerous, the whole double album, and uh, he's one of my favorite drummers, and uh, sorry I missed that show. So, Oh, they have a, mu a huge music uh, scene in Ireland, and uh, especially in, in Cork, Southern Ireland, and uh, it, it's fantastic. Not not just rock, but all kinds of different styles of music. You know, it's, it's, uh, it's quite amazing actually how many great musicians there are here. Yeah, for sure. Uh, and so how, how's this gonna work? How's, how's Jeff Tate acoustic gonna work here? Yeah, well, tell us about we've this. Done, we've never done a um, online show before, so this is kind of new territory for us. But um, it's, uh, it promises to be a, a really interesting time. Um, I have, a couple of years ago, I did an acoustic performance, uh, a, a total tour based around acoustic performances, acoustic versions of my songs. And uh, it went down really well. And I had a particularly good time playing that kind of format. And uh, so we're going to reinvent that again for this show. And uh, I've got some incredible musicians joining me. And uh, we're uh, going to go online with it and see if we can uh, make it all happen. And um really it's it's kind of a thing that being in the new world that we are now where live shows are not permitted in a lot of places um this is kind of new, the new frontier so to speak so uh all the guys in my band have been out of work for months now because we were right at the beginning of uh our u.s tour uh when the pandemic hit so uh we had to cancel all those dates and we have dates uh in in august here in the uk that are uh uh, canceled as well. Dates in Ireland are canceling or have canceled. And we have uh, dates in Europe that are uh, kind of on the fringe right now. So this might be all there is, you know, for the short upcoming future, you know, until maybe winter. But uh, so we're going to give it a run and we hope that uh, people uh, tune in and and uh, we're going to have our tip jar out there for uh, all the musicians to uh, split up kind of like the old days you know when you, you had a tip jar on the piano or a tip jar on the stage kind of revisiting that time again you know interesting <laughs> and jimmy's uh, jimmy's uh, on the show we've already done two of these types of uh, live streams and uh, maybe this is the new norm mo moving forward for x amount of time right 
Yeah. Well, it, may, it might be. I don't know. It, uh, but we're going to, you know, jump in there and see how uh, how it, how the water feels, so to speak. You know, so I, who, do you, who do you have? Oh, sorry, Jim. Go ahead. No, no, I was going to just say, I've seen two. I've seen Anvil and I've seen Voivod in Canada. And, and it was a stream like you're going to do it. And I think the difference, actually what I've noticed, people will pay if it's done right. If there's good audio quality and good video quality and, and quality. And the two that I did see were excellent. Excellent mm -hmm. video quality, excellent song choices. If it's done right, it'll work. That's what I'm trying to say. People will pay. Well, Thoughts? good. I hope, I hope that's, uh, you know, in our case, I hope that's the situation. I'm actually really looking forward to it. Uh, I haven't played live or even played uh, any music in, well, few months now so I'm kind of jonesing you know to uh, <laughs> play music with the band I've been in the studio you know playing you know with, uh, to uh, making you know uh, recorded music that kind of thing but it's it's really different when you have a band you know so who is in the band this time around uh, it's my it's the band that I've been touring with um, uh, the past couple of years uh, Kieran Robertson on guitar James Brown on guitar uh, Jack Ross on bass guitar, and then um, I have uh, a new guy that I've never played with before uh, on a cone, which is kind of a you know a, a square box basically. And I honestly I can't remember what his name is. I haven't even uh -oh. him yet. We're gonna meet for, <laughs> for, for uh, rehearsals, and so I'm he's a referral. <laughs> Really? Your drummer can't get in. Because yeah, because my regular drummer can't get into the country, so uh, I'm using a different drummer. Uh, so that'll be interesting too. But he is uh, apparently um, very familiar with my music, so we're going to get together for a few rehearsals uh, and uh, give it a go. Right. So what what happened? Were you in Ireland to do these planned dates, and they got canceled, and this is the alternative, or how'd you make it yeah. into the country yourself? My, well, my wife and I spend a lot of time in Ireland, actually. It's one of our places we love. And uh, so we were here, and uh, and now we can't get out. <laughs> <laughs> and so we decided so, uh, to do And that's fine. It's, it's a great place to hang out for the summer, you know. And uh, so we're enjoying that and visiting our friends and our daughters here. And, uh, we have family members here, so it's, it works out great. Great. Right. And what kind of set lists are we looking at here? Okay, there's some classics and a few surprises. Okay, I mean, you're not going to tell me the surprises, but what are we looking at in terms of what you can tell us? Well, it's kind of a, a set list of a lot of different things. You know, I've got 20, 21 albums, I think, <laughs> material. So I have a pretty, you know, deep, uh, deep set list if I, if I start uh, picking stuff. And what's kind of neat about acoustic uh, performance, in, in my mind, is that you can take a really, really heavy song and, and completely turn it on its head and do it completely differently uh, acoustically. And I'm not, I'm not talking like, uh, you know, folk music style. This is a, a, a Jeff Tate kind of acoustic thing. It's, it's quite a bit different. And I, I don't know really how to describe it other than that. People just have to kind of tune in and see. But there will be a, an array of songs from uh, all my uh, discography. Oh, very cool, very cool. That's Alan? discography. Yeah. No, speaking of that, I mean, we're just about to do our, uh, we do uh, going back all those years and we take a, we're at 1984, the top albums of 1984. And here's a spoiler alert. Ta -da. Gonna this one's going to make Ta -da. it. So, uh, you know, and look at this, I'm digging through all my old magazines here. Here's a hit parader with some Jeez. fresh faced boys here. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, you know, the EP really opened up a lot of doors. The the Warning is one of the best sounding debut albums I think I've ever heard. Uh, and it was done at Abbey Road Studio. So we're talking about Lear Studio and that's and, and Abbey Road. Is that the, what's, what's your thoughts about uh, that album at the, coming out of that time? Well, you, it's just a brief, brief uh, reminiscence. Oh, well, it's, don't get me started. That was uh, an incredible time in my life. Uh, a real changing point, you know, where you experience a lot of different things in one one big time, and it uh, it really sets you on a course that's different than where you started from, you know. And uh, we were living in London at the time and uh, making the record, writing songs, and uh, just uh, immersed in the London music scene, which was a really cool scene at that point. 
and all these great clubs. And uh, I don't think I really slept much at that time. <laughs> I, I was I was wide awake. You know, I didn't want to miss a thing. So uh, I stayed up a lot. The vocals lot. did not suffer. <laughs> no. Well, I was 22 years old, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it's easy to recover, you know, when you're that age. <laughs> But I mean, EMI at the time was not one of the heavy hitters when it came to the metal scene. And, and again, it seems to look like the, all stops were, were put into for Queensryche to have success right out, right out of the gate. So, Well, they, they did give us a sort of carte blanche, so to speak, to you know, make the record. And we hired uh, just a phenomenal producer, James Guthrie, who was uh, just freshly off of working with Pink Floyd and The, and the Wall and the Final Cut. And um, of course, he's gone on to, you know, be the Pink Floyd, you know, uh, engineer, you know, and done so much work with them over the years. And, uh, and he's why, you know, we, we picked him because of his connections with Floyd. We wanted to uh, have his uh, experience and his kind of wisdom at the, uh, at, at the mixing console, you know. And uh, we learned a lot from him. That was the first time we'd ever used a computer, you know, um, which was fascinating. And just being in those, you know, London studios at the time, I, I remember walking into Mayfair Studios where we were finishing up the last of the overdubs and meeting Tina Turner there. And she <laughs> just finished the Private Dancer album there and uh, she was on her, her last day there. And so we got to spend quite a, uh, a little time with her uh, talking and uh, having lunch. And that was quite a wonderful experience. And uh, we met up with Iron Maiden at that time. Hey, wow. there you um, go. Gosh, um, five guys out of Washington, right? And you were worried, of, hey, how are we ever going to be noticed out here in Washington? And now you're <laughs> meeting Tina Turner and Iron Maiden, right? Yeah, yeah all in this like the same couple of weeks. And meeting the people from Floyd at the time was phenomenal for me because I'm a huge fan. But you know, the 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 scene in London was was kind of widespread. There was there was metal, there was rock, there was uh, pop music. Uh, there was this underground uh, music happening at the time. Depeche Mode was just sort of starting to come up. And I went on a lost weekend uh, with Martin from Depeche Mode at that time. Chris, <laughs> our gu guitar player, ended up hanging out with Jimmy Page for a couple days. Jeez. And at that time, you know, there's no cell phones. So people just would disappear, you know, and you wouldn't be able to contact anybody, you know. <laughs> it was strange to think about it in today's terms. But um, yeah, it was a, a phenomenal time that I, I, I have great memories of. And again, the EP opened so many doors for you, which led to this album. But what, how would it be different today if you were to go about it? I mean, it's a completely, like you said, new world. How would I go about recording a, an album? Yeah, how would you, you know, the EP, that was the strategy. You sold it independently. It led to a record deal and then uh, to the warning. Uh, today, it would be much, much different process, I would imagine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, you know, at that time, you know, record, the record industry was a, an industry, you know. It had millions and millions of dollars to spend on its artists. And, you know, it employed... Um, you know, uh, multiple thousands of people, you know, working for the record company. And uh, it was a whole way of doing things that just doesn't exist anymore. You know, as far, in fact, I, like my daughter is, uh, Emily has uh, uh, had her first album out and she's just finished her second one. And um, she, she's asking me these questions about, you know, how the record industry works. And I honestly, <laughs> I said, well, there really isn't a record industry anymore. You know, it really is it's a whole different thing. Uh, and it is, it's, uh, it doesn't even resemble, you know, what it was then. So I, if I was going to start over, I don't know if I, uh, well, I don't know if I could, you know, I wouldn't know where to start because it's so um, fragmented, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and you're constantly being, like, you know, we, we check out little magazines like this here and uh, try to get a feel of what bands are coming. And, and, but now there's just so much saturation and you're being bombarded at all times. It's hard to kind of find, find the band. In, in, it is. It's almost like there's too much information exactly, you know, yeah. to sort through. Yeah, I think we, we've gone from mystique to personal. Like now people have that touch with, with, with their bands. Where in the olden days, you couldn't, you know, talk to them on Facebook, let's say, or you couldn't talk to them with email or whatever the case is, or Instagram, right? There's no connection back in the day. Now it's, today we have that touch, but back then we didn't. And uh, in, in a way, um, 
riffing off what you said, yeah, exactly. And almost because there wasn't a connection, we would fill in the blanks with our own yeah. mind and, and yeah. come up with what we thought was going on, you know, yeah. which most likely wasn't. <laughs> it was entertaining. <laughs> all we had is the back cover of the band to just look at who they were, right? The mystique of it all before videos. And, um, we, st and we stared at the back of the albums for hours as we hours. listened to records. Yeah. <laughs> so switching it from one side back to the other side. Who is this Jeff Tate character? Who is this <laughs> Jeff Tate guy? <laughs> but how about this? How about the studio? And I mean, I don't want to get too into it, but what do you remember? I mean, you did tell us about the recording of Operation Mind Crime and, you know, writing it in Montreal at the bar on St. Denis Street. But what do you remember from sort of the atmosphere of creating the album at the studio at the, at the site? Well, it was very inspirational to be there because of its location at the time we were there it was winter so it was snow 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 and we would get up early in the morning uh i know it sounds very on rock and roll but that was kind of our our thing we get up early in the morning we go skiing and we ski uh all morning we'd come back to the studio and they always had like a catered breakfast uh brunch kind of thing for us and we'd start the day with a nice healthy uh you know breakfast and then we work all night and take a dinner break you know, yeah. and if you ever went to the studio, you'd know that in the control room, there was this big windows that looked out on the landscape and it was snow with this beautiful lake right there. And it was very picturesque and, and uh, always something, if you, if you're in the studio, a lot of times you're staring, thinking, you know, and you'd be staring at this beautiful picturesque scene, you know, so I found it personally very calming. And so it was a way to, uh, kind of calm your mind and so you could concentrate i guess a little better you know maybe focus on what it was you were working on i don't know i i really uh enjoyed the vibe there and then also there was this kind of um elect electric buzz about the place because the people that worked there were very into music very into the sound very into technology and the developing technologies and and there was always conversation about what was happening what kind of gear was being used and how we could hot rod the gear and make it different and you know uh that's very interesting conversation for a musician you know to always have that kind of thing going on and if you broke something there they had a guy there that was a, a complete tech head who could fix anything <laughs> and he would always be there on call to you know, uh, replace a wire or fix a ground issue. Yeah, he was great. All right. Uh, uh, how about like new music? Have you been working since you know, all this downtime, this COVID-19? Have you been working on a new album or new music or what's going on there? I've, uh, I'm finishing up one album with a uh, Italian friend of mine. And uh, we're about mm, three quarters of the way through that. And then I've done a couple of uh, one-off songs for different projects, um, a film song that's going to be in a movie. And then I'm also working on um, a new a new record that I can't talk about right now. Oh, okay. okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Always All right. busy. Always busy. Right. Including Avantasia, which I, uh, we had met the last time. And again, following the interview, went to the show. Our cameraman's like, well, you know, that's not really my cup of tea. It's too melodic. I said, you will be amazed. You will be amazed. This will probably be the greatest concert you ever saw. We met up after the concert, and he's like, Alan, you were right. This, this, that was unbelievable when you got that much talent on the stage and you being a big part of that as well. So, It was a really great show at Montreal. And, and in fact, every show was great. That uh, Avantasia band is uh, always on. I, I think in all the shows we did, in the last few years, I've only heard one mistake, oh. and it was and it was me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the 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 texture of your voice and everything. I remember. I, I still get chills about. It. Look, I, the, the, I got goosebumps. Look at that! Look at that! You can see them. It's it, unbelievable. Uh, it was the funniest thing. Is I got to tell you this. My mistake was, it was my first show. I think it was in uh, Switzerland, and the way I entered the stage was up this uh, stairway up and back. And then I'd get to the top of the, of the stairway and it was a big ramp. And that's where the reveal would be. All the lights would hit me. I'd start singing the song. So I walk up, I'm standing on the stairs, getting ready to go up. My cue is coming. 
and I feel somebody tapping me on my foot. And I look down and I think, oh, it's the, the side stage uh, crew chief and he's tapping me on the, on the foot. He wants me to go on stage now. Oh, maybe I've missed my cue. So I, I jump up on the stage, <laughs> I go to sing my song and I realize why he was tapping me on the foot was that my microphone was not on and he wanted me to switch it on. <laughs> <laughs> so the first line I was not heard, my mistake. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let, let's circle back now. Friday, the 21st, August, in August. Of course, this is like, what is it, like next week or in 10 days or nine days? What? Yep, you got to get ready. Get ready. <laughs> August 21st, and it's a 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 2 p.m. Pacific, 10 p.m. UK time zone. Jeff Tate and his band will be performing songs throughout the years, some classics and some you won't be expecting. Alan, you want to guess maybe? Throw out some, throw one out, throw one out, Alan, throw one out. Not a clue. Maybe, maybe something off of American Soldier, maybe. Oh. Uh, you know, I don't know. I don't know. There's lots <laughs> to choose from, that's for sure. So Lots to choose from. 222 songs, yeah. <laughs> so I think you could purchase your ticket on the Operation Mindcrime Facebook page, correct? Where else correct. can you get it? Is there anywhere else you could purchase? Uh, uh, Jeff Tate uh, Facebook page as well. Okay. All right, and you could see a little video message there. You could join the event, purchase a ticket. Well worth the money, I'm pretty sure. This is Jeff Tate, acoustic Jeff Tate. This, this is a must. This is a well, must. What's really cool about it too is if you if if it's in um, it's in you know, of course we're kind of straddling time zones around the world, and if you can't watch it, you can still get your ticket, and you have 40, 48 hours. I oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah, so it's a delayed thing, so you you can work your schedule around it. You know, so it's it's very very good. Any uh, special Irish guests joining you, maybe? Just jumping in, maybe like a Bono or something, no? <laughs> yeah, me and Bono hang Call out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's got nothing else to do. And... Alan, do you have anything to add? No, no, this is a, thanks again, Jeff. It's always, always a pleasure to speak to you and find out what you're doing. You're so busy. You got so many projects and some you can't even talk about. They're top secret. We'll be shot if we top ever secret. divulge. You know, live album, live album. I'm expecting a live album, maybe just to bring it all together, a live album. You know, that's a good idea. I haven't done a live album in a long time. Yeah, yeah. All right. There you go. Put on your list. For right. live streaming instead of live album. Live stream. All right. Say thank you to your wife for thank you. Thank you to your wife for setting this up. Thank you, uh, Jeff, and we will talk soon. All right. Thank you guys. Good thank seeing you. you. Good talking. Right. Thank Thanks very much. Bye bye. Say farewell to the future. Get